and welcome to Raven's Roosting, Christoph's Kitchen. Today's edition is brought to you by the Climate Action Committee, Sodexo Food Services, and the Inspire Sport Nutrition and Exercise Physiology Lab. We're going to be talking about sustainable choices using plant-based recipes. And today I have joining me from the Inspire Lab, juniors Cole Dorman and Lexi Duddy, who are going to be talking a little bit about preparing healthy foods um, with a twist that are plant-based versus the regular versions. I'm here talking from my kitchen um, and Cole and Lexi are joining us from their homes as well. So Cole, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about plant-based diets. Hi, I'm Cole. I'm streaming all the way from Farmington, Maine, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about understanding the vegan diet. The vegan diet is one that is one that eliminates all animal products, while some people even choose to not use any clothing or hygiene products that are made using animal testing or animal derivatives. All meat and dairy products are removed from the diet, such as chicken, fish, eggs, yogurt, and milk. There are other types of there are other types of vegetarianism that that differ from veganism, such as a semi-vegetarian who eats no red meat, or a pescatarian who eats fish but no other meat, or a lacto-ovo vegetarian that eats eggs and dairy but no meat. Some things to watch out for during the vegan diet include nutritional deficiencies, specifically with iron and B12. But some benefits to the diet include there's no cholesterol, as cholesterol only comes from animal products. And the diet is also super high in fiber, but very low in saturated fats. Now let's walk through a vegan option that provides an alternative to chicken Parmesan. Eggplant Parmesan bake is an entirely vegan dish and its main ingredient eggplant is high in fiber, but low in carbs and fat and very nutrient dense. So the ingredients include two medium or one large eggplant, two cups of diced vegetables, such as mushrooms, onions, carrots, tomatoes, peppers, or summer squash, a jar of tomato or pasta sauce, vegan breadcrumbs, and if you'd like, even vegan cheese. Back to you, Dr. C. Yeah, so we have a bunch of the ingredients over here. So of course we need our eggplant, you know, and we also want to make sure that we have a variety of colorful veggies. So Cole gave a lot of great examples of colorful veggies that we might be able to use to mix in with a traditional jar of pasta sauce. So here, I just have some of the veggies that are left over from my weekend cooking. So I have some red peppers, which have a good amount of lycopene in them that is cancer fighting. Some sweet potatoes, really high in vitamin A, um, which is great for vision. And I have Brussels sprouts, which have lots of fiber and a bunch of phytochemicals that are disease fighting and immune boosting as well. So here, just on this plate to make this eggplant parm, we have four different colored veggies just ready to go. In addition, we also want some breadcrumbs. And um, you know, as I think I've told you on this show, I am gluten-free, so I choose gluten-free breadcrumbs. But I find that for this recipe, the panko breadcrumbs can be really nice because they're just a little crunchier. And especially if you're not adding Parmesan cheese to the eggplant parm, um, this can provide some of that crispness that the Parmesan cheese isn't necessarily providing in the plant-based recipe. So back to you, Cole. Tell us how to make this. Okay, so to start off cooking, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 450 degrees. Then for veggie preparation, you're going to want to cut your eggplant into half-inch chips or rounds, and then dice your other vegetables into half-inch cubes for the sauce. Then you're going to mix the two cups of diced vegetables with the tomato sauce in a mixing bowl. Then pour half of the mixed veggie sauce into the bottom of the baking pan. Then top the veggie sauce with eggplant rounds and top the eggplant rounds with the other half of the veggie sauce. Then top that with the vegan breadcrumbs and finally add the vegan cheese if you wish. Bake at 450 for 40 minutes or until the breadcrumbs start to brown and serve this over spaghetti or on a sandwich. Back to you, Dr. C. 
Yeah, so here is our finished product. And I did end up using some veggie cheese for this. So cashew cheese is one of my favorites. It doesn't taste fantastic. The cashew cheese shreds to me, you know, uh, not a plant-based eater and a cheese lover. Um, but when it's in a casserole form and melted, you really can't tell the difference. And I'm going to try to trick my husband with this this evening. Um, and as you can see, this turns into a really nice eggplant bake. Um, if you have a nice little Pyrex too, you can just put that little plastic shield over the top and this will last in the fridge for a few days. And as Cole said, you know, you might want to have leftovers of this by putting it on some French bread for a sandwich or something. Um, or my favorite is to have it with chickpea pasta. So this um, recipe in and of itself, unlike chicken parm, isn't very high in protein, but if you use a high protein um, spaghetti or other type of noodle, such as a chickpea or a lentil pasta that's made of some sort of legume, it can really provide that protein packed punch and some extra fiber. And this is just such a healthy nutrient dense version of a comforting favorite. So um, thanks so much, Cole. And Lexi, tell us a little bit about plant-based diets from your perspective and where are you calling in from? Hi, I'm Lexi. I'm calling in from Old Lyme, Connecticut. And I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about plant-based protein. So after all of that, um, Everybody's thinking, where do you get your protein from? Because it's needed for growth, development, energy, and hormone and enzyme production, fluid balance, and it helps with immunity. The average adult needs about half a gram of protein per pound of body weight, but a strength athlete looking to gain muscle mass might have a goal of eating one gram of protein per pound of body weight. There are two different types of protein, animal protein and plant protein. Animal protein is high in readily absorbable vitamins and minerals that can be accompanied by some saturated fats. Animal proteins include meat, fish, eggs, milk, yogurt, and cheese. Plant protein is high in fiber and phytochemicals and low in unhealthy fats, but also contains less high quality proteins and less absorbable forms of vitamins and minerals. Different grains, legumes, and nuts and seeds can be combined to make complete proteins. Soy is one type of protein that is high quality in and of itself. So some examples of the amount of protein in various foods. So an egg has about seven grams of protein. A cup of milk or yogurt has eight grams of protein and Greek yogurt has twice this amount. Um, three ounces of meat has 24 grams of protein. A scoop of whey protein powder has 30 grams of protein. A half cup of rice or pasta, a slice of bread or a cup of cereal has two or three grams of protein. Half a cup of beans has six to 10 grams of protein. A quarter cup of nuts or seeds has four grams of protein. And a half a cup of tofu has 10 grams of protein. The following recipe is packed with plant-based protein. So we'll walk through some of the ingredients and have high protein tacos using the special vegan ingredient tofu. So the ingredients that you'll need to make this are 14 ounces of extra firm tofu, which is one block and you'll drain that. Um, three tablespoons of soy sauce, a quarter cup of tomato sauce, two teaspoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon of cumin, a half teaspoon of black pepper, a pinch of cayenne, olive oil, four small corn tortillas, and for your toppings, shredded lettuce, diced tomatoes, vegan shredded cheese, guacamole, and salsa. Uh, back to you, Dr. C. So as, um, as Lexi said, you know, we can make this fantastic concoction using the soy sauce and oil and um, many different spicy spices here. And you can sort of change the amounts of those spices too, in terms of using the pepper and the cumin and those sorts of things, depending on how spicy you want it. Um, as she mentioned as well, you can use regular or the vegan cheese. Um, I actually use the same cheese for both of these recipes. It's, um, it's a cheddar blend, but it actually tastes pretty good on that eggplant parm as well. And then for toppings, just like with the eggplant parm, we want to go for colors. So as you can see here, you know, we have our beautiful variety of colors. So I have some peppers, I have 
tomato for our lycopene containing red veggies. I have some corn tortillas, which are considered whole grain. I have some lettuce over here for the traditional taco feel. I have my avocado, which is really rich in healthy monounsaturated fat as well as fiber. Um, I also have some grilled pineapple, which just happened to be left over from our grill night last night. And so grilled pineapple can be a great addition if you want a little bit sweeter flavor and don't necessarily like the spiciness of tacos. And then of course I have my drained and diced extra firm tofu here and olives because I like olives on the top of my tacos or my taco salad as well. So back to you, Lexi, let us know how to put this all together. So the prep for this dish is super easy and it's really customizable so everybody can enjoy the taco that the way they want it, like Dr. C said. So you start by preheating your oven to 400 degrees and then you use your hands and crumble the tofu in a medium bowl and then add the soy sauce mixture with all the spices in it and then you stir it until it's well combined. And then on your baking sheet, drizzle some olive oil and then put the baking sheet in the oven after spreading the tofu across very evenly. For It'll be there for about 20 to 25 minutes, and then you stir or flip halfway through until the tofu looks like it's golden brown and crispy. And then once that's done, that'll be your protein for your meal, and then you add on all of your toppings and enjoy. Back to you, Dr. C. Thanks so much, Lexi. So as we see, our finished product is so beautiful here. So we have two different types of tacos. So I have my, these are my favorite shells at home, the ones that stand up um, because they just look so nice on the plate. So you could use a hard taco shell. Hard taco shells are a little bit higher in fat, um, but added to a low fat option like this, they can be a really nice, crunchy, crispy way to have your favorite here. And then of course there's the soft taco option as well. So we have our soft taco that's filled, you know, this one I ended up filling with a variety of sweet potato and um, tofu, a little bit of peppers, and then some lettuce and my favorite olives. So really healthy nutrient dense choice, high in protein, high in whole grains, high in fiber rich veggies, um, which can just be a great addition to your weekly menu. So the last um, type of recipe that I wanna talk about is actually from Rebecca Hunt at Sodexo. So Rebecca and I and Lexi and Cole brainstormed a little bit and came up with a bunch of different plant-based options that could be offered at the CAF. And the recipe today that we decided to highlight is the grain bowl. Now the grain bowl is one of my favorites because it's really diverse. You can choose a lot of different options to make a healthy bowl. Um, I talked about the grain bowl a little bit when we spoke about our mason jar meals. And so when we're looking at the key ingredients, we want some fiber rich foods, we want a healthy fat, we want some sort of whole grain, and we want some sort of protein. So here we have lots of different options. And similarly to my last recipes, I just use a lot of things that are left in the pantry from the week or are leftovers in the fridge. And I can combine these to make a new meal. Um, it's a really satisfying grain bowl. And we're hoping to offer these grain bowls and they have been a little bit this past year as well at the cafeteria. So as we look at our ingredients here, our grains or our starchy vegetables could be something like a whole grain type of rice. So here we have wild rice. I really like the taste of wild rice because it's sort of nutty, um, has a nice flavor, and the color is just really awesome too. Um, I might also choose something like sweet potatoes. So that's going to offer some high quality carbohydrates. It also offers a little bit of sweetness, which is lovely. Um, for a protein, I might choose something like lentils or something like black beans or something like chickpeas. I happened to make some um, black lentil stew this week and I had some leftover lentils and so I'm gonna use those in this week's grain bowl. Then you want to add some sort of fiber rich food. So here we have um, our red peppers, that lycopene again, throwing that in. 
And then we have our leafy green. So here, because we use the lettuce in the tacos, I'm using lettuce as well in this grain bowl this week. But often I'll use something a little bit thicker, like kale or some spinach, something that is a little bit more sturdy that stands up to, um, to a little bit of time because I end to the dressing because I like having my grain bowl, you know, three days or so in a row. Um, as part of my meal. So then lastly, we want to add a little bit of fat. So for my fat today, I'm going to add some crunchy almonds and some olives because I'm just really into olives today and I bought them for this show. Um, all right, so we have our grain bowl, right? This is about, this is gonna be three or four servings for me this week. And to mix it up, I might put it in a wrap sometimes. I might add it on to a big bowl of leafy greens um, for a salad. I might, you know, warm it up and throw some cheese on it and or some vegan cheese since I have that in my pantry now too. And since I added my healthy fats in here, I'm going to use a vinegar based dressing. Um, this is one of my favorites, the lemon tarragon dressing, and it's low calorie and no fat. So it's really just vinegar and lemon and some tarragon and some other spices. So I'm just going to douse that over here. And then to top it with a nutritional little benefit here, we have um, nutritional yeast. So nutritional yeast can be a really great um, Parmesan cheese substitute to sprinkle on soups or salads. Um, and it's super, super high in vitamin B12. So there's actually 470% of your daily intake of B12 in here. And B12 is often a nutrient of concern in a vegan diet. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a little of this on the top here, it's really good on popcorn too. I like nutritional yeast on popcorn. So um, I'm gonna sprinkle it in there. We're just gonna stir this up, mix it around. I, it's a little bit better when it sat for a little while. So I'm going to put it in the fridge for a few hours after I mix it around. And then if I've exercised, I'm gonna add it to a whole grain wrap to have a little bit higher carb value. And if I haven't exercised that day, I might add it to, um, to make a grain bowl or a salad. Um, and if I'm a little bit extra hungry, Hungry, I'm going to add a little bit more fat by throwing some cheese on top and maybe even baking it in the oven to make a warm meal on a cold and rainy day. Um, in addition, you know, desserts can also be vegan. And when we look at the dessert that I made last week at Christoph's Kitchen, the chickpea cookies, they're high fiber, lower in sugar, and a great vegan option as well. So as you can see here, we have four fantastic options, a plant-based eggplant parm, tofu tacos, grain bowl, and some chickpea cookies, if you go back to last week, that we can really use to have a sustainable, healthy lifestyle that aligns with our values of taking care of both ourselves and the planet. So thank you so much for joining us here on the Academic Showcase edition of Christoph's Kitchen. And thank you so much, Cole and Lexi, for teaching us a little bit about plant-based diets, as well as introducing us to some favorite recipes. Have a great day.